Timing matters. Have you ever experienced a nagging feeling or heard that voice in your head? Both sparking, sparkling a feeling of something you need to do. A feeling of urgency. But, but you just don't know what it is and you can't put it out of your mind. However, sooner or later, it resonates with you. And it may boil down to perhaps a phone call to someone you haven't spoken to in a long time, a visit to the hospital to see a sick friend, or perhaps you have a sense that there is someone in need of your help. Maybe it's just a matter of listening, or maybe someone needs a prayer or a hand to cling to in time of trouble or the comfort of the loss of a loved one. Have you ever thought about where this sense of urgency is coming from? I know most of us have experienced it. Most of the time, it just comes out of nowhere, or so it seems. But it's not by happenstance. Whether or not we respond to it is interconnected with our self-awareness of who we are and whose we are, that we have a power source that leads and directs us. The voice within that says, get up, get moving. You got something to do. Someone out there needs you, go. The thing is, we let self pop up get in the way, and we push that feeling, that voice, that sense of urgency aside and don't allow it to surface, to reveal the nature of the nagging, the tugging, and, and then lo and behold, we find ourselves saying, I wish, I should have, why didn't I? I should have listened to what most people would probably label as their instinct or intuition, and now it's too late. I can recall feeling such regret over the years. I will never forget a nun telling me after I'm whining about how I often I'm redirected off my chosen path and you know, that's not where I wanna go. That's not what I wanna do. I have something else in mind. And she said, if I don't follow the path chosen for me, someone out there miss their blessings. Let me say it again. If, if you don't follow the chosen path, someone out there will miss their blessings because they are waiting just, just for me at that time, she told me, or they are waiting just for you. And most likely, I, I won't even realize or you won't even realize that you've touched someone in a special way. In other words, for me, what I believe she was telling me it would be my fault if I put myself, my wants, my desires, my busyness first and not go, not do, not respond to that voice within. Timing matters. Suppose in today's text, Philip, had disregarded the voice of the angel from God that told him what to do. 
he would have missed an opportunity to mentor, to interpret that which resulted in a life-changing experience. Timing mattered at noon, not half past, not four o'clock, not six o'clock. At noon, take this road, not that road, not over there. Take this road. So Philip did what he was told to do, not knowing what this was all about. And you know what happened? He encountered an Ethiopian man, a man of color, an African man, a foreigner, a dignitary, an official, a unit responsible for the queen's entire treasure, an educated man. Yet, this educated man with all this responsibility needed help in interpreting the scripture. I think sometimes we think we know it all. And so we, we, we don't ask for help. If it's something that we don't understand and, and we just don't want to, you know, step out because we don't want nobody to know that we don't know. So we kind of interpret things ourselves, and when we do that, you know what happens? We're interpreting it the wrong way. And, and that's why Sunday school is important, and Bible study is important, and, and, and small group study is important, because what you think somebody else may not think, but overall, you'll come up with something, something that is interconnected with the Holy Spirit and what the Bible wants you to learn out of that particular gathering in Scripture and interpretation. And so this learned man, this, this educated man, this aristocrat, there he was sitting in his chariot, reading aloud. And you know, we said reading aloud. Why was this man? Well, you know, sometimes you need to hear yourself. You need to read aloud. And if you read aloud, you can keep your own attention. Your mind is not going to be wandering all over here, wandering all over there. Reading aloud is still good at our age. You know, we read aloud to young children. I read aloud to my granddaughter. My granddaughter reads aloud to me. And so you, we're focused. So here he was reading aloud. And I, I think he was reading aloud because he was really trying to get what he was reading. But Philip was right on time. And the voice spoke to Philip again, telling him to go over to the chariot. Go over to the chariot. Don't stop. Tie your shoes. Don't, don't, don't fix your hair. You know, don't, don't brush your beard. Don't, don't put your earrings and make sure everything. Just go. Go. Go like you are. Go. Now. Go. Go over to the chariot. He was in the right place at the right time because he listened to the voice within and did what he was told to do. Timing matters, church. There is a song, and I'm getting ready to finish because this is simple. There is a song that was famous in the movie Color Purple. I don't know how many of you all have seen Color Purple. Have you seen Color Purple? Well, there's a song, and it says, God is trying to tell you something. You know, God is trying, it's a song, God is trying to tell you something. You know, in this story, this young lady had been all over the place, done everything that she needed to do. Her father was a preacher, man. He was a preacher. He turned his back on his daughter because she was out there in the world. And she was out there for a very long time. You know, but whoa, one of these days, see, you can't get away from God. You can't get away from God. Oh, one wanted that she heard the voice. The voice. God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. Church, when God is trying to tell you something, listen. If you don't know what God wants you to do, just say, speak, Lord. Speak to me. You got that nagging feeling? Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. You can't sleep at night? Lord, speak to me. Speak, Lord. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Timing matters.
It may be too late. Somebody needs you. And, and, and you know, I, I told my husband, I said, my ex-father-in-law, whom I had still called daddy, I said, something is telling me I need to go to see him. Something, when my husband said, okay, let's get in the car, let's ride and let's, let's go. And, and I saw daddy and, and he had had one of his legs, you know, amputated. And, and then his other foot was, was kind of messed up. It was, it was also in green. And, and dad said, he said, Maxine, I'm not like I used to be. And I said, that's okay, daddy. You know, and we stood there and we had a long, because nothing was wrong with his mind. But my mind, that nagging feeling, say, go see daddy. Go see him. And, and, and then two weeks later, later, daddy was gone. But I, if I, and I was okay, you know why? Because I did, I responded to what that inner voice said to me. And, and, and so I'm not, doesn't necessarily have to be deaf. I'm not saying that. But I responded to that inner voice. So I had no problem when I arrived at the funeral and participated in the funeral because I had done what God had told me to do. And that's what you got to do, church. You, you don't, don't, don't be the cause of, of someone missing out on their blessing. And I know it was a blessing, and I'm going to say it was a blessing to Daddy to see me because he was always very proud of me, even though I was his daughter-in-law. He was proud of me. So he, it was a blessing for him. I brightened up his day. And I can say that because I saw the smile on his face. But had I not gone, oh, praise God, if I had not gone, then I, I would have been crying and carrying on at the feeling like, you know, I, you know, I did something, oh, I'm so sorry. But I was all right because that's what we do, you know. We fall over the casket. We do all that when we don't do the things that we're supposed to. But that's another story. You know, so we don't want someone to miss out on their blessing. And you don't want to miss out on your blessing because it goes both ways, church. Timing matters when God's trying to tell you something. When the Holy Spirit speaks, listen, go. You never know. You just may make someone's day. You know, you made my day. You made my day. And that's all somebody needs sometimes. It's just, wow, you made my day. You may not have done anything. It just may have been a smile. It just may have been you in their presence. It, a phone call. You know, how you doing? You know, how many times we walk in the church? Yeah, we pass the peace. But if we wasn't passing the peace, how many of you would go up to someone and say, how you doing today? Are you all right? Were you blessed this week? You know, how many of us would do that? You know, I think they put that United Methodist thing in there because passing the peace, because we know how we are sometimes. We would just go, come in and go out. But you put the passing of the peace so you can connect, because you may just make somebody stay. And, and, and so, like Philip, oh, we can do what Philip did. What did he do? He baptized the man. He made a disciple for Jesus the Christ. Timing matters, church. Timing matters. Turn to your neighbor and say, timing matters. I can't hear you. And you leave today with that in your, timing matters. Listen to the voice. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Timing matters. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.